What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of More Seasoning. I am your host, Farnham, and today we have our third installment of the full-length follow-along recipe video. I figured for the third one, we gotta go in, we gotta make it count. Thanksgiving is right around the corner and everybody loves to make my epic mac and cheese recipe. So I figured, why not just do a follow-along? That way, if you're in the kitchen, you pop it up on the iPad, on the TV, on your phone, you can follow along with me and we can make this thing perfectly. Two options, we can stop when and it's nice and soupy like a goopy mac and cheese or we could take it the extra mile and end up way over here and finish it off with a nice panko breadcrumb bake on top. Hey, before we jump into this recipe, please scroll down and hit that like and subscribe button. Drop a comment below, I'm always down there with y'all. We gotta turn these cameras on, get everything set up so we can start cooking. See you in a second. All right, so we got our cameras up. We got camera one, camera two, camera three, and we got all of our ingredients right here. So let's go ahead, we'll go through the ingredients and then we're gonna get right into the recipe. This one should not take too long at all. So we're gonna start with some cavatappi pasta. We've got some unsalted butter. We've got half a cup of all-purpose flour. Then we've got smoked paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, Frank's Red Hot Sauce. No, this will not make it spicy. It's just gonna add some depth to everything. We've got some Dijon mustard. And this is a new addition to the recipe. We're going with nutmeg. I read that nutmeg goes really good in a bechamel, helps the cheese sauce flavor come out. We've got a block of Philadelphia cream cheese. I've also got a little tub of some, uh, what is this, chive and onion cream cheese, also Philadelphia brand. Then for our cheeses, we've got Gruyere. If you hear George bark in the background, sorry. We've got extra sharp cheddar and we've got some Colby Jack. We've also got, I believe it says half a gallon of some whole milk and some panko crumbs. So we're gonna start with the prep work first. I'm just gonna go ahead and get all my ingredients to the back of the stage. There we go. So I can make some room to do this prep work. Here we go. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna knock out our panko crumb mixture that's gonna go on the bake. Now, if you're not baking your mac and cheese at the very end, don't worry about this. But I will say, if you are baking it, we have extra cheese sauce left over so you can drizzle it on so it's nice and cheesy. Give me one second. So right here, boom, got my casserole dish just in case we're baking. So check it out. You wanna know how many breadcrumbs are gonna go on top, right? You gotta measure it out, very easy. Whatever dish you're using, you're gonna grab that. Then we're gonna grab our breadcrumbs and we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna sprinkle them in there until we get a nice even coat all over the whole thing. So I know it's probably hard to see in there, but I'll show you in a second. Boom, check that out, Jamar, you see that? So we got a nice full coat of breadcrumbs all over. Now we can leave it right there, but that's not how we get down here on more seasoning. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Also gonna grab a little bit of some cracked pepper. Let's do about 15 cranks. So let's talk guys, Thanksgiving right around the corner. Whose house are you going to? What do you got going on? Anything special and what dish are you making? If you're watching this video, I assume it's this one. All right, so we got about 25 cranks of pepper and then I'm gonna go in with some salt and just season with some salt. There's a nice pinch and a quarter right there. And then I also like to finish this off with a little bit of smoked paprika, just a nice mix. Now, if you watch the original video, I actually watched it back the other day and I laughed because I take a whisk and I whisk this all together, which is kind of dumb because you're gonna grab yourself a bowl. A bowl like this will work perfectly, right? And all we're gonna do is we're gonna mix that up and it's gonna go right into this bowl and it's mixed up already, so no reason to mix this with a whisk. So we can take our breadcrumbs. Back by, here, let me put it on this side actually. Back by the stove, casserole dish. Can go on the counter and then the only other prep work we have we gotta fill this pot up with water, almost forgot. Let's fill this pot up with some nice hot water. And then we just have to shred our cheeses. It's very, very easy. This is a very simple recipe. Uh, the only thing that's intimidating about the entire process is just making the roux, which is the base of the cheese sauce. And honestly, it's not bad at all. So let me grab my cheese grater real quick. Slide on over here. Now, I got a box grater, but you use what you have. You know, you also have to remember that this is all getting melted in some hot sauce, so you can just chop it up very finely if that's the only option you have. Come over here, we're gonna grab a knife. I hear, uh, hold on. 
try to quiet that up a little bit. So we're going extra sharp cheddar. Now, if you're asking why we're doing extra sharp and not medium, which I use in a lot of my recipes, it's because this extra sharp cheddar needs to punch through all of the other flavors in the sauce to really emphasize that it's a cheese sauce indeed. So I do about two and a half cups of this. So we're just gonna go straight onto our box grater right here. And we're just gonna begin to shred this on the second to largest setting. Oh, grab my water real quick. All right, so we've been here before, ladies and gentlemen. In our last follow along, what I did was this, okay? And I thought I was boiling my water, but instead, I turned this pan on, and when I went to demonstrate that I was touching bacon, it was like 600 degrees, took my fingerprints right off. So we're gonna make sure we turn the correct burner on this time. We've got our water on a high heat in the back. We're gonna throw a lid on, and then also a little bit of salt. There we go. Sorry, that's kinda loud. Okay, great, so we're back at our cheese. We just gotta wait for that to come to a boil for our cavatappi. We could also talk about the cavatappi noodles. Uh, why do I choose that noodle? Well, cavatappi is a nice corkscrew shaped noodle and it's hollow as well, so it just allows a lot of cheese and a lot of sauce to get all over those noodles. So that's my choice, but you could technically do elbow macaroni, you could do whatever you want. That's just my choice. All right, so we're going for two and a half cups of this extra sharp cheddar. Again, just shredding it up. Let's give that a look. Uh, that looks pretty close to me. Let me grab a big bowl. All right, and then, if you guys don't already know, where is it at? I think it's in here. Bench scraper. <clears throat> PSA. Get you one of these if you're doing anything in the kitchen. You don't dull your knives out and it makes your life a whole lot easier. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and scrape our cheese in, just like that, perfect. All right, next, we got ourselves some Gruyere. Now, Gruyere is a nice, melty cheese. It's kind of in the Swiss cheese family, um, but it's not as stinky and gross, because, listen, I like a lot of cheese, you couldn't pay me to eat Swiss cheese. I just, I don't get down with the Swiss cheese. It's stinky and it's gross. Um, so we're coming in here. I'm just gonna open this Gruyere up. Beautiful, okay. Look at that. Very good. Okay, so Gruyere going down. Here we go. And we're gonna do one cup of this Gruyere. Sorry if the energy is a little different in this video. Uh, me and Jamari just got done from having like eight pounds of barbecue right down the street. We had to take a little dinner break in between videos and I have the itis. If you don't know what the itis is, that's what happens when you wanna take a nap after you eat. So, we're gonna power through. We're gonna get this Gruyere going. We want about one cup. It's actually a little more than a cup, but you know what, we're making mac and cheese. Who cares? Grab our bench scraper, scoop it on up into the bowl. Beautiful. And then the last cheese that we have, are you able to see in here, Jamari? I'm sorry, bro. Okay, the last cheese we got, some Colby Jack. Now, when I originally came up with this recipe, I know I had a reason for choosing Colby Jack, and to this day, I don't know why. But it's a bomb cheese sauce, so we're gonna stick to it. It's a nice marbled, Obviously, between a Colby and a Jack. <laughs> I don't even know if that's correct, but we'll just assume it is. So, a nice marbled block right here. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the same exact thing as the Gruyere. We want about one cup of this nice and shredded up. It's gonna be about three quarters of this block. Here we go. And after this, ladies and gentlemen, this is literally all the prep work that we have. I mean, we're straight to the stove after this. We could also preheat our oven, since I will show you how to finish this with the bake. We could preheat the oven back there. Beautiful, almost there. Let's see where we're at. Yep, that's about a cup's worth. So again, I'm just gonna grab our bench scraper into the bowl, perfect. 
the rest of that cheese out. Voila, slide around and beautiful. And just like that, we got all our cheese and that can go and sit back here by the stove. Now at this point, uh, we got our panko done, we got our cheese is shredded. All of this stuff is just ingredients that are gonna go into the sauce. So we could slide back over to the stove and start our breadcrumbs. So put my stuff over here. Now the breadcrumbs, I'm gonna put this pot there for a second. I'm gonna grab myself a, ah, the fingerprint pan. They're still in there, fingerprints are still there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and toast our breadcrumbs since our water, as you can see, still got quite a bit of ways to go before we come to a boil. I don't want our cheese sauce to be done and evaporating and thickening up while we're waiting for that. So we're gonna hit our breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna turn this burner on a nice low heat, close to a medium, and then we're gonna grab some butter. Uh, I believe the butter is right here. And then what we're gonna do is this breadcrumb is gonna go ahead and top the mac and cheese. So we wanna go ahead and toast it in some butter. Trust me, it's gonna taste delicious. It's gonna be perfect. So I'm just opening up some unsalted butter here. And I'll do about a third of a stick to start. If I need more, we could pop it in. If not, we'll be good. And as you can see, we got a nice little melt already going down. So if you've watched any of my other follow along videos, you know, there's a lot of waiting going on when you prep things out and you do things correctly. Not everything in the kitchen has to be like Top Chef or Hell's Kitchen or anything like that. It doesn't have to be dramatic like that. If you're prepared and you're doing well, you're gonna have time to chill out, relax, clean up while you're waiting for things to finish cooking. What, with the last video we did, we had everything prepped out. It was a sweet potato casserole. We prepped everything out. We, I did all the dishes, put everything away, dried everything off before it was even done. So. You just stay on top of it and you'll be good. So we got our butter melting over here. I'm gonna grab that knife and just kind of push it around a little bit more. See if we can get this kind of expedited a little bit. Beautiful, we got some nice bubbly butter going on right here. Wonderful, okay. So we still got a little bit more of that butter to melt, but we can go straight in with our panko. Give that a whiff, some nice seasonings in it. Smoked paprika really pops. So we're gonna go in and we're just gonna spread this around. Great. And then I'm gonna grab myself a little silicone spatula. Then we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna move that butter around. We're gonna move all those seasonings around. Make sure the butter gets soaked into all of that. It's gonna keep melting. Look, that's that butter chunk right there. Okay, just move this all around. So it's all coated. Listen, you heard that sound in the background. It sounded like somebody was hacking up a lung. It's George. I, I don't know what's going on with him. He's just been coughing all day, more than usual. Georgie, what's going on, man? You all right? You feel good? Speak. All right, good job, buddy. Good job, we appreciate you here. We appreciate you, bud. Now, I, I probably just opened Pandora's box because he's gonna, bark and cry and beg for a treat. So I probably shouldn't have done that. So as you can see, we're still moving this butter around on here. Just trying to get these last little bits to fully melt. And this is gonna start toasting up nice and beautifully. Now, it almost looks like cheese it's in there, right? Ooh. Somebody actually told me that they top their mac and cheese with cheese it's in the oven. And that is a wonderful idea. I will have to try that next time. But this is my recipe, the epic mac and cheese recipe, 300,000 views strong, so you know we're coming through with some good stuff, right? So here we go, spreading it on out. So I made, I made this recipe early on in my YouTube career. It was one of the first ones that I made when I came back. Uh, to Tampa and we started filming again after COVID. It's probably like my eighth video on the channel. And I was so intimidated to make this because I had never made a bechamel before. It's crazy. Like I had, I, I had dabbled in cooking when I started the channel. A lot of people don't know this, but I definitely was not um, an expert by any means. I was very novice. I was a big rookie. And you could definitely tell by the way I cut things in the video. Like literally Jamari, 
Like I would have a knife and I'd be like, all right, so we're gonna cut some cheese and instead of coming in and you know, like cutting it like you normally would and then you do a side, blah, blah, blah. I would literally come in and I would like hold the knife like this and just like <laughs> cut huge chunks. It was a joke. Um, Oh, we got some toasting going on. We got to keep these guys moving. As you can see, that's what we're going for is a nice toasty brownness right there. Keep these guys moving. Beautiful, beautiful. How's your bag, Jamari? He's holding a big old camera again. Beautiful. And as you can see, we've got some browning here. I'll pull it to the side so you guys can actually see. We've got some browning going on here, some toasting, a little bit of Maillard reaction, which is exactly what we're looking for. And we're still on a nice low heat. I give this about another 15 seconds and we're gonna be done with our breadcrumbs. And right now, you smell that? It's starting to get buttery. We're starting to smell that butter, kind of like cook through and toast that bread. It's gonna be fire. Look at what a spaz he's being. Show them real quick. My man is literally attacking a bed. What's going on? George, what you got going on, man? He only does this when I'm filming. It's, it's the most annoying thing in the world. Like, they're literally silent dogs until somebody has to film, and then all of a sudden it's like, they're the spokesperson for annoyingshitzoo.com. It's ridiculous. Okay, so we're gonna cut that heat off. Look at that, beautiful, nice and toasty. Oh, smells incredible. And we can go right back into the same pan that we were in, this little bowl right here. So we're just gonna take our breadcrumbs and we will just move them on in there. Wow, this really does smell so good already. Beautiful. Get that popping. Sorry guys, just wanna make sure I get everything in there. Beautiful, there we go. Okay, so that's going in the sink. Be careful, very hot. And then we can keep our breadcrumbs back here. Let's go ahead and check on our water to see if we're boiling yet. We've got some small bubbles forming on the bottom of the pot, which means we're on the way to a boil. So we can definitely start with our cheese sauce. Now, check me out. Here we go, we're going on this burner. Now that burner's still gonna be hot, so it's gonna heat this pan up. We're still gonna go low heat and we gotta go in with a stick of butter. So this guy will go back in the fridge. This guy is gonna be the base for our beautiful cheese sauce. So here we go. Nice low heat once again. I'll show you guys what we're cooking with. Boom, there we go. Low heat, pan on, and pop them out. And then we got George hacking up along in the background yet again. Okay, so butter's melting. Let's talk bechamel, a roux, the base for our cheese sauce. Equal parts butter and flour always. Okay, one stick of butter is equal to half a cup of all-purpose flour. That's what we have measured out. Once that butter melts, we'll throw that flour in, let it cook down a little bit, mix it up, and then we just hit it with some milk and that creates the base for our sauce. It's as easy as that. Very, very, very simple. Nothing to be intimidated by. Give this a little rinse real quick. I don't want any breadcrumbs in my... Breadcrumbs in my cheese sauce. You know what I'm saying? I guess I gotta wash that, I'm on camera. I'll be honest, three second rule, but we'll, we'll keep it sanitary today. Okay, so back over here, checking on our butter. I don't know, can you see it? Oh, you can definitely see in there. Okay, cool. So yeah, we got our butter just melting down right over here. And then in the meantime, I'll show y'all what this cavatappi pasta looks like. Jamar can get a nice little close up shot, I'll pull it out. You can be being all extra with a knife, it's got a lift tab. Okay, so, Cavatappi, check that guy out, okay? See, it's got ridges. Not only is it spiraled, okay, so cheese sauce can go here, 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 and here, but it's ridged, so it kinda just settles into the ridges of the pasta, and also it's hollow, so sauce gets in there. So basically the most cheesy mac and cheese bite you could ever have. So we'll cook the whole box, uh, I'll, send leftovers home with Jamari or to the family or whoever wants it. Uh, we got our butter right here. We got a little steam action going on. Don't let your butter burn, okay? If there's one thing that I can teach you in this video, 
that I've learned since starting cooking, low and slow is almost always the way to go, okay? You, you throw on high, you burn stuff, stuff cooks too quickly or unevenly, and that's not what you want. So we got ourselves on a nice low heat. We're taking our time. Everything will come together. Speaking of come together, Who's got an awkward Thanksgiving, huh? Who's going to their family's house and there's that awkward cousin or that sister or brother you haven't talked to in six months because you got in a fight over nail polish or something or, or who, who backed their truck into your truck? Like, who knows? But I think we all got a little bit of an awkward situation, right? Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Am I dysfunctional? Okay, butter is almost completely melted. We're gonna get it all the way there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll show you real quick. It's the last little bit of butter we got there. We can just break that up into a mix. Perfect, okay, so right here, half a cup. I used to measure my solids in a liquid measuring cup. No, this is half a cup. So we're gonna go in and we're just gonna sprinkle that onto the butter or into the butter, should I say. And then if you're using a non-stick pan, always silicone folks, always silicone. Turn that heat down nice and low and we're gonna mix. And this is going to become the base of our sauce. And as you can see, it is already turning into this paste-like substance. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue to mix. Just get all the flour off the sides of your pot. Once this comes together perfectly, yes, exactly. Now at this point, it looks like applesauce, all right? It's got a nice, like, almost honey mustard yellow tint to it. It's exactly what you're looking for. So what we're gonna do at this point, let me just check my heat. Let's get it a little higher than that. We got it on a nice low heat. We're gonna let this cook, okay? If we add our milk in right now, our sauce is gonna have this raw flour taste. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. You ever get a piece of bread from the bakery and it's got like the white flour dusting on top and you bite into it and it's like, oh, whoa. It tastes like flour. That's what'll happen if you don't let this cook down. I'll actually pull a timer out. I would say we're gonna give it about 90 seconds or so. Um, I guess my timer's, oh, there it is. It was hiding under my other cheese grater. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna start that. Give it about 90 seconds or so. Mixing as you go because like anything, if it stays still, that will burn. Whoa, what's going on? Got dogs wiling out tonight. You know, it's, it's actually a miracle that I filmed two other hour long follow, follow along videos and the dogs didn't make a peep once. I don't know how that happened. Okay. All right. And as you watch this roux cook down, as it starts to cook a little bit more, it's gonna get darker and darker and darker. And eventually, if you let this go, it'll turn into uh, there's like different levels of roux. There's like a blonde, there's like a deeper one. And then when you wanna make stuff like gumbo, that's when it's like real dark. Uh, but we're obviously not doing that today. So, just letting this continue to sizzle. Continue to cook down, beautiful. We're at one minute right now. I'll say minute 15 because it took me like 15 seconds to pull that timer out. So, uh, I'm gonna let that continue to cook. And there's really nothing else we can do at this point. Um, got nutmeg. We're gonna need this nutmeg in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this nut out. Sounds crazy. Uh, whoop. Three, two, oh no, one. Three second roll. Um, so the nutmeg, how are we gonna, we got a whole nut, what the hell are we gonna do with this, right? We gonna cut it? No. We're gonna grab ourselves a little micro plane, or you could even use the other side of your cheese grater. Let's see, I've never even done that. Let's test it to see if you can do it. We got the grate side. You can absolutely use the grate side of your cheese grater if you wanted to. Oh, this is such a special smell. So we're gonna use this nutmeg here in a second. Let's go ahead and tap back in over here. All right. Roux is starting to look perfect. It's darkening up. I definitely think that we've cooked most of that raw flour taste out of it. 
Just going ahead and giving it a nice little whip, make sure we get all of it done. As you can see, I don't know if you guys can notice this, but the flame is definitely cooking more on this side, right? Like we can, as you can see, we definitely have a lot more action on this side versus this side. So uh, I think that just has to do with it not being centered on the burner and not so much pot composition. Okay, so I'm feeling good about this. Feeling good. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our milk right here. We got some whole milk. Hey, real quick, I know we're, we're live right now. It's filmed in real time, but I wanna let you know, I ended up using too much milk and I didn't whisk enough and my sauce got too thin. So please don't use any more than four cups. Just whisk that until you get it to the perfect consistency so it's not too thin. You can use an alternative if you want, but if you're using all the cheese, then I don't see why you need an alternative for whole milk. Um, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna whisk our milk in. This recipe is gonna end, at least when I made it a couple of years ago, at around four cups of milk. We're just gonna go as we want. That way we can make the consistency of the cheese that we want. So here we go, I'm going in with just a little bit of milk. This has been sitting out for a little bit, so it's not ice cold. Uh, a lot of people say you're not supposed to put like cold milk into a hot roux, but I mean, you're fine. We're just gonna whisk this, and then it's gonna kind of come together into like a Play-Doh or like a mashed potato, and there it is. It looks like some really dry mashed potatoes. Grab our milk, and then we're gonna go back in with another splash. There we go, just a little bit at a time. We don't need to drown it. Okay, there we go. Nice, nice, nice. Now they're becoming a little bit more of a rehydrated mashed potato. Here we go a little bit more. And this is it, making a bechamel, making a roux. This is it, not hard at all. Okay, now they look nice and fluffy. Just a little bit more and we're gonna turn into a sauce. Watch, it's gonna happen right before your eyes. Go ahead and grab that milk just hanging out around the sides. Oh, we're right about there. Here we go. I would say this one will get us into a nice thick sauce. Continue mixing. Almost there, almost there. Go ahead and whip in those edges towards the center. And look at that, right on cue. A nice thick sauce. Okay, obviously we don't want our cheese sauce to be that thick, right? So we're gonna come in here with a little bit more milk. Again, we're still on a low heat and we're just gonna whisk this all in until we get it to a nice thin consistency. Cause you gotta remember, we're going in with cream cheese and all of the cheese that we have grated up. So that's gonna thicken things up as well. So don't be afraid to add a little bit more milk. Okay. Wow, looks beautiful. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Just a sh just a tidge more. And at this point we're I don't wanna say halfway, but we're about a third of the way done with this milk. And we have almost the perfect consistency for the sauce that we want. Perfect, nice. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go in with our nutmeg. First thing, first things first. Uh, I actually had somebody in the comments comment. Again, I don't know everything. I'm not a wizard, I'm, I'm learning as I go. Uh, in the comments, I had somebody tell me, add nutmeg to cheese sauce. And I was like, nutmeg? That's like such a harvesty, like warm, rich spice. Like why would I put that in a cheese sauce? And I looked it up and it really does just bring out the flavor of a cheese sauce. So here we go. We're gonna go in with some ground nutmeg. And they said, you just have to do a pinch. So I'm only gonna add about an eighth of a teaspoon in here. Of some fresh ground nutmeg. You can just buy regular ground nutmeg from the store if you want. There it is, so that's our nutmeg. We'll see how that goes. Okay, and we're gonna give this a whisk again. Just go ahead and whisk that nutmeg in. Just so it has time to really absorb those, those honestly like deep intricate flavors, right? We want that to get nice and dispersed into the sauce. So nutmeg is in. Next, cream cheese, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the city of brotherly love. Philadelphia cream cheese. We're going in with half of this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this in half. We can just squeeze it from the back, just like so. Pop that guy in. 
All my football fans out there, what's up? Jalen Hurts and the Eagles, Philadelphia going crazy. I know it, I know it. That boy's balling out. Okay, so now we have our chive and onion. So if you can't find this at the store, don't worry about it. It's just gonna add an extra little uh, to your cheese sauce. Uh, sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. I'm gonna go in with about a third of this pack. Maybe that's a little closer to half, but that's fine. Boom, that's going in. Easy breezy. Look, we're almost done. Honestly, God, we are truly almost done with this. Uh, next, we just have our cheeses, okay? So we're just gonna go in with our cheese. All of it. All of it, yep, absolutely. Get in there. Beautiful. And now we just mix. We're just gonna mix this thing up. We got it on a nice low heat. We got a lot of cheese in here. We're gonna need more milk, absolutely, because think about how thick this is gonna get, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and work this in, kind of fold it in a little bit, even though I've got a whisk. I'm gonna try to fold this in. And one mistake, I'm not even gonna call it a mistake. Let's say everybody's got their own cooking style. I use more seasoning, too much seasoning for some people, the perfect amount for most, not enough for very few. But um, I see a lot of people make cheese sauces and they don't season it. They throw salt and pepper. And I'm like, family, like you could make this such, such a better sauce. You just gotta add a couple things to it. Okay, so check this out. We're thin right now, or I'm, well, it's opposite day. We're actually very thick in here, okay? It's like I'm actually having trouble moving this around because it's so thick. So again, we're just gonna go in with a little bit more milk. There we go. And then we can just kind of make small little circles just like this. And it's just gonna go ahead and get that milk in there. We gotta spill. Spill on aisle three, okay? No big deal. Grab a paper towel in a second, but let's go ahead and try to work this cheese in. Work this milk into this roux. Oh. Actually, okay. I think, I believe this is a Mornay sauce. Now that I've added cheese, it's no longer a bechamel, it's a Mornay. You see this? Look at all the steam right here. I was like, what is that coming from? Well, ladies and gents, I believe, oh yeah. We got a full boil going on. That's what we needed to see. It's good news. All right, let's go ahead and keep mixing this up. We're gonna have to add a little bit more milk in here. No big deal. Now at this point, I would say we're approaching the halfway mark on our bottle. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and work this in. I know it doesn't look like creamy mac and cheese right now. Don't be afraid, don't be stressed. I promise it will come together. Okay, we're just working that in, working it in, working it in. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of like taking it and pulling it into the center, right? Cause it's getting, you see it all built up around the edges. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just kind of pulling it from around the edges and working it into the center. That way we can disperse that milk however we need to. Beautiful. Very thick, look at that. That's, that is a cheese sauce, okay? Do you want your mac and cheese? Is that what you want on your mac and No. No. No, it's not. So we're going to add more milk. Okay? I like mine runny. I like it soupy. I like it like a YMCA lap pool, baby. Give me laps. Okay? So that's what we're going for right now, but we're just adding a little bit at a time because we don't want it to be too watered down. So it's starting to come together a little bit more. It's a lot of cheese. Listen, I told you, this recipe is meant for a cheese bake, okay? So we're gonna have cheesy macaroni in our pot, and on top of that, when it comes out, we're gonna have extra cheese sauce to drizzle all over the top of it, and that's what makes this recipe stand out. There we go, we're just mixing. Turn this heat up just a little bit. We got it on like a nice low medium. We're mixing, we're mixing, we're mixing. Okay, get this out of here. More milk. Again, like I said, we're gonna be close to about four cups.
There we go. Now we're starting to thin up. Beautiful. I'm not gonna lie, I was over here. I'm like, Jesus, this thing is not, this is not thinning out. What's going on here? I was getting a little stressed, but we're approaching the perfect consistency right now. Again, we just gotta work all that. There's a lot of cheese. We gotta work all that cheese in. There we go. I don't know what is on here that's so damn thick. I don't know if that's cream cheese that's left over or what. I'm gonna just let that sit at the bottom. Let that warm up. Give myself a break. My wrist is getting tired. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna clean up, okay? So, one thing that I've been doing lately is I have myself a trash can, okay? Anything that goes in the trash goes in the trash can instead of the actual trash. That's good. Well, nope, I gotta put my cheese back in there, technically. Jamario over here like, ooh, his bag is killing him. Okay, all this stuff is going trash. Nut on the loose, we got our this. Come back over here, check this guy out. All right, so pasta time. We're almost done with our cheese sauce. We just have to basically season and get the consistency dialed in at this point. So we can naturally go in with our pasta. So I've got my cavatappi. I'm just gonna go ahead in right here. Drop that in. Also, ladies and gents, don't forget, pasta will stick, okay? So just give that a nice little mix. Beautiful. I absolutely did not have to fill that pot up that much, but it is what it is, okay? That's going in there. Uh, let's go ahead and set a timer. I believe on this box it is, what are we looking at? Uh, nine minutes for firm, 10 minutes till tender, eight till al dente. I say we shoot for nine minutes uh, because we're gonna finish this in the oven and we don't want it to become mushy, so we don't want it cooked all the way. So we're gonna let that roll. Let's check on this cheese sauce. Look at that, oh, okay, nice and melted. There we go. Give this a nice little mix. Man, this is like, uh, I'm just kind of stressed out. What's going on? I literally just made a cheese sauce. What, what video is that where I made the cheese sauce? I just did it. Uh, scout, scout oh, my scalp potato video. All right, I just made a cheese sauce and it was not this difficult. So I don't know. I don't know if I just added too much actual shredded cheese. I did go over on the cheese. It's true. I did, I, I did over, well, yeah. I did over shred the cheese. Um, so, oh, there we go though. Look at that. That's becoming nice and runny. Okay. Yeah, I used Oatly. I substituted milk in the last one for some Oatly to see if it would work, just to see if people could, you know, make a substitution for the dairy, and it definitely worked. There it is. All right, now I feel a lot better. I was like, what the hell is going on over here? So it was just the center was a lot more thick than around the edges, but now that I'm kind of, there we go. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now that I'm just kind of like moving everything around, doing some small circle, look at that. We're good, we're good folks. We passed the test. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this actual cheese consistency. All right, I have a feeling it's gonna be a little on the thin side now. That's how quickly it changed. Like that is definitely a little thin, okay? So what I'm naturally gonna do is kind of let this reduce, okay? So basically how that works is all the steam that's coming off here, that's water, okay? That's water that's gonna come out it's gonna concentrate flavors a little bit more, but I do want it to be a little thicker than that. Not much, not much, but I do want it to be a little bit thicker. I could also add more cheese to thicken it up if I want to. We could throw a little bit more uh, Philadelphia in there or shredded cheese, but I think if we just leave this alone for a couple minutes, it'll kind of naturally reduce a little bit. And we also have about five or so minutes left uh, until we gotta pull our pasta out. So in the meantime, let's clean up, let's chit chat, let's talk. You hear the music? Do you like the music? I'm gonna make an executive decision. I just lied to myself. I'm gonna throw a little bit more cream cheese in there. Only cause this is flavored and I like it. About another tablespoon. Okay, so let's clean things up. Let's get our stations ready. We're just waiting right now. 
Obviously your cheese is probably gonna be the same consistency as mine right now, which is a little on the loose side. Uh, unless you kind of did a better job at mixing than I did, then you're probably good. Uh, we got our Gruyere. Uh, I don't know what we did with our Gruyere packaging. I'm just gonna throw it in here with the Colby Jack. Call it a day. We got our extra sharp, or, oh, there it is. We got our extra sharp. Fridge, 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 nutmeg. You guys feeling good? You feeling confident? You scared? You nervous about how this is turning out? I have to say, I measured out four cups last time. I definitely used more than four cups this time, so uh, we'll just play it by ear. I can even comment down below if uh, you need to use less, but I think we're gonna be okay. That's so much cheese sauce, holy <laughs> I put way too much milk in and did not whisk enough, but we'll be fine. That's what it's all about here. One more seasoning is we pivot when we need to pivot. Y'all watch Friends, pivot. Yeah, we pivot when we gotta pivot. We get it right, we'll make it work. I'm not tripping. All right, our nutmegs are done. I can go back in our spice drawer. There we go. Uh, that went right in and right out. All right, nutmeg in the spice drawer. This box, trash. Gruyere airbag, trash. That can all go over here into the trash. Perfect, uh, we've got microplane, we are done with that. Salt and pepper, we're gonna need here in a second. We're pushing five minutes on our pasta. Let's go ahead and check our cheese sauce out. Giving us a nice little whisk. That's what that was, you heard that? Was George? <sighs> Again, George, just making noise. Okay, cheese sauce. CBD, to be determined. Uh, panko crumbs are done. Uh, I gotta clean that milk up. There we go. God, what would we do without paper towels? We just have dirty dish rags everywhere all the time. Um, we're done with this knife. And then check this out. Again, that's why I love the bench scraper. Ready, check this dirty surface out. Just give that a scrape. One more. Beautiful, and we just give that a little bit of a wash later. All this stuff will go in the fridge. And, I mean, we're just back here, we're, ch we're chilling. Like I said, when you cook things the right way, and you prepare the right way, you do a lot of waiting, a lot of cleaning up, which is great. Okay, we're starting to thicken up. I'm feeling a little bit better about this. Jamari, does that look too thin to you for a cheese sauce? A little bit? A little bit. Looks a little thin to me. I say we let it keep reducing. Uh, we are gonna need to dump out our pasta here in a minute. So let me go ahead and grab a colander. I'm not, I gotta be honest, I'm not really sure why that happened. It literally, you saw it, it went from like thick as glue to thin as water and, and 20 seconds, that was really weird. Um, maybe it's because I'm using a silicone whisk versus a metal whisk, which I used to use. But it's all good, we'll make it work, we'll make it shake, shake and bake. Okay, here we go. That's starting to thicken up, perfect, okay. We're gonna be all right, folks. We're gonna be all right. All right, so. At this point, pasta's almost done. We're gonna drain that. Uh, we're gonna want our, where are we at on there? We're at seven and a half minutes. I said we were gonna go to nine, so we got a minute and a half left. I say that we start seasoning our cheese sauce right about now. Uh, that way our pasta's almost done around the same point. I'm actually gonna cut the heat off on my pasta in the back and then we'll give that about another minute and we can start to flavor our cheese sauce. Now, I'm gonna use the measurements that I normally use, even though it feels like I used more milk and then we will taste the test. So uh, I'm gonna start with some smoked paprika. I'm gonna use about a teaspoon or so of that. 
It's like caked in there right now. We'll start there. Onion powder. Everybody loves a good little bit of onioniness, so we're gonna do about a teaspoon of onion powder as well. Garlic powder. Can't go wrong with some GP, baby. We're going in with the garlic powder. Same spiel, about a teaspoon. Okay, we're gonna go in with a bunch of salt. And by salt, I mean pepper. Gonna do about 30 to 40 cranks, beautiful. Then we're gonna go in with some salt and obviously we'll salt to taste when we're done. So we'll just start with a nice pinch. That was a little generous, it's fine. Uh, we got some Frank's Red, okay? We're gonna do some dashes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That feels good to me, 12 dashes. And then with my luck, this is an unused Dijon mustard and I'm gonna have to pull the seal off. Yep every time okay and then we're gonna do about two let's see what feels right one do about two tablespoons of Dijon and now we're gonna go ahead and mix this all together okay so here we go we're mixing this wow yeah I mean that uh, this cheese sauce just swallowed all of that normally my sauce kind like it has like a nice bright redness to it um, and a lot more of the seasonings and spices you can see in there, but it's just very, very thin right now. Disappointed, but I promise we'll make it work. Obviously, if you're watching this, you're, you've used less milk. Measure out four cups. You shouldn't have to go over that. Measure your teas out right. This is what happens when you eyeball stuff. You can run into some hiccups, but we're gonna get it right. Don't get it twisted. Okay, so go ahead and grab the sides of our bowl, pot should I say. Here we go. And get ready for a steam show. Woo, hot, hot damn. Okay. All right, we got our Mac in here. Beautiful, we'll let that drain out. We'll give it a second. Now we can't let this sit here too long or it's gonna start to stick to itself, okay? So it's gonna have to go back into this big pot. Take this off. Great, let's check on you. Cheese sauce, disaster. Okay, it's starting to reduce. It's starting to look like a cheese sauce to me. It's starting to look nice. Okay, so we're gonna have to taste this. Okay, that thickened up, that, that's better. I feel good about that, that's good. All right, we gotta taste this real quick and see what we need. And we're gonna continue to let it reduce. Okay, cheese sauce. I can't tell if, oh no, that yeah, that's hot. Okay, here we go. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, wow, that's actually incredible. Okay, low heat. I have to warn you guys, and I told you to keep everything low and slow for a reason, because when it comes to cheese sauces, if you get it too high, your cheese sauce is gonna get gritty. I had a bunch of comments about that. Why, why when I make my mac and cheese, is it like gritty? Is it, you know, why does it have that texture? It's because you got it too hot and the cheese broke, the fat's broke and the cheese, not a good situation. Okay, it needs more salt, needs uh, a little bit more Frank's, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go in another couple generous pinches of salt. That's one pinch, one and a half pinches. Uh, we're good on our garlic and all that. So we're gonna go ahead and mix this in one more time. Hi, Tipsy, what's going on? You okay? You want food, don't you? You want the foods? I got you in a second, mama. All right, we're going nice, low and slow. Beautiful, just go ahead and get all that salt, all that Frank's mixed in there. Here we go. Gonna do a little taste. It's gonna be scorching hot. All right, here we go. I don't know if you can see that Jamari, but you can see all the seasonings and spices that we have in there. Looks a lot more familiar. Oh, wow. That's great. Mm. That's good. 
That's a good cheese sauce. I'm giving that, I'm giving it a four. I think it does need a little bit more salt, I'll be real. But it's close. Which makes me happy because we made it work. We're just gonna have a shit ton of extra cheese sauce, that's all. Okay, so another little pinch of salt. Mix that in. Okay, now check me out. This is how I usually do it. So, I take this pot, pull the lid off. I grab our pasta that's just been steaming over here. I go back in, it's probably gonna sizzle. It didn't, lovely. And once you're happy with the flavor of your cheese sauce, let me see if I'm there. I know I keep tasting it, but I'm trying to get it right. <clears throat> Oh, that's perfect, okay. Cheese level is good. Oniony, garlicky, peppery, salt's there. I feel good about that. It's gonna get real easy from here. We're at, we're at, the, we're at the end of it. You know what I didn't do was preheat my oven to 350, damn it. <clears throat> Make sure you do that. So. We're gonna push our pasta back so you can see. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna grab ourselves a nice ladle. And then we are just going to slowly but surely get our cheese sauce mixed in with our noodles. Now, this can be a little messy. I got a little trick right here that I learned. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so we'll start there. Pop that down. And we got a mix. Falling apart, man, like Post Malone. It's been a long day. We're gonna go ahead and mix this up and it should start to turn into a beautiful mac and cheese. There it is, there it is. There it is, yes. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Oh, fire. Okay, let's go heavy. I, like I said, lap pool, I want it swimming, okay? We got this to a good place. As far as consistency goes, we're just gonna have extra, like I said, and I'm so sorry, but I'm sure there's a lot of things you could put cheese on for Thanksgiving. Put it on your bread, put it on, well, whatever else you would put cheese on. Beautiful, okay, let's check that out. Give this guy a mix again. Oh, you can't even really see on this camera. Let me see if I can tilt it for you. There we go. There we go, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. See that, folks? Matter of fact, Jamari, coming to you. Can you see in there? Nobody, nobody can see in the pot tonight. What if I do this? You see that? Looks pretty damn good, huh? Needs more, I think it needs more. What about you? You don't, you don't think it needs more sauce? Well, let's give this noodle a taste then. Jamari's, Jamari's making executive decisions right now. Needs a little bit more sauce, just so it can get in them noodles, but. And you also have to remember, we're baking this, like he said, like I said, so it's gonna dry out a little bit, so don't be afraid to just sack up, baby. Here we go, I say we go for it. You ready? I'm going for it. Three, two, one, here we go. Oh yeah. A swimming pool full of cheese sauce, then I dive in. Give that a mix. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh baby. Oh baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Grab your casserole dish. Okay. And we're just gonna pour that Mac attack out, baby. 
we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite. My favorite part right there. A couple of them little last, the little delayers. Okay, so we're gonna spread this out. Just like this, perfect. Get a good little layer on there. Put our bowl back here. <clears throat> mm. Okay. Now, the issue with mac and cheese in the oven is it can tend to dry out. Even if it's nice and cheesy like this, it can tend to dry out. So, I'm just gonna go since, oh yeah, that's hot. That's hot, I almost burned myself again. Since we got some extra, I'm just gonna go ahead, I don't normally do this, but I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit more on top. Let that sink in there. Little extra cheese never hurt nobody, unless they're lactose intolerant, like Leroy. And then we come in here, smooth that out, beautiful. Now that cheese sauce is gonna penetrate down, keep everything nice and moist. And we're gonna come in here with our panko, and then watch this, just as easy as this, okay? Loosen everything up, and then I'm trying to give you a good angle. I'm just gonna go ahead like this. Okay, and then we grab, oh man, I keep just dirtying things up. Annoying myself tonight, I'm off. It's all good though. Boom, move that around. I'm sure my mom had to cook for me a million times when she was having a bad day, so we'll be fine. Oh, these smell amazing though, these breadcrumbs. Just totally full of flavor. Mm-hmm, and look at that, folks. Look at that, beautiful. All we gotta do, finish this in the oven, easy money. We're at 350, we'll go in for like five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it's supposed to be in that, not really sure. All right, so we got our Mac in there. We're just gonna go ahead and clean up. We'll cut the cameras real quick and we'll be back in about five, 10 minutes. Keep in mind, everything is toasted in there already. We toasted our breadcrumbs. Our Mac is done, so we don't need much time in there. It's just gonna help everything heat through. Come together perfectly, we'll be right back. All right, keep in mind, everything was toasted in there. I'm pulling it out. It's been about five minutes or so on 350. So we're gonna come down here, grab our little oven gloves. No glove, no love. Slide in there. Bam. Look at that, baby. Mac and cheese. City. Okay, so a couple things. We're done, all right? But there's a little add on that we can do to this. Okay, pull this guy to the side, slide him on over. And I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna grab myself a serving spoon. And then we're just gonna grab. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Lovely. Okay. Grab ourselves a nice serving. I'm gonna pop it right here for you. Hot. This really does smell incredible. Okay. Now, we had extra cheese sauce, so it's nice and cheesy, but if you wanted extra, extra cheese sauce, you come over here, you grab yourself a nice spoonful of this beautiful cheese sauce. You can drizzle it right over. Wow. Special stuff right there. Actually, I'm gonna go for my thumbnail real quick. Ready? Check this out, this is what I do. I'll grab a cheese sauce, I'm gonna hold it up and then I'll go. That's just straight thumbnail. Beautiful. All right, taste test time. Mm. 
You know what's so funny? I have no problem being honest with you guys. It's so funny. The videos that I think are always gonna be the easiest, you can ask anyone. You ask Jacqueline, you ask Jamari. The videos that I always think are gonna be the easiest and the quickest are the ones that give me the most trouble. And it's like, I, I don't get it. Like the stuff that I'm like, this is a hard recipe. Like I fly through it, but like, I've made this a million times and I've never had the sauce give me that issue. So here we are with extra cheese sauce and at least we've got some nice yummy mac and cheese. So we've got a breadcrumb on there. That's beautiful. Oh, 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 oh. Come through, grab a couple pieces, just like that. Here we go, taste test. Three, two, one. I mean, it's fire. It's fire. I'm happy with it. Um, I think when I make it correctly with the correct measurements, and I don't eyeball it like I did tonight. I'll never do that again when we film one of these, by the way. Uh, the flavor is a little more intense. A little deeper, but it's good stuff. You want to try, Jamar? Go oh, ahead, yeah, big dog. Yeah, we do whatever we want. It's our show, right? It's your show. But... Oh, appreciate that. Here we go. Breadcrumb's actually good on it. I'm not even a breadcrumb fan, but it complements it. I like it. It had a little crunch to it. Mm hmm. And like butteriness. Okay, he went in for a second, so that's good. <clears throat> yeah, no, I like the flavor of the cheese. Mm hmm. I like it. It's rich. Mm hmm. That's why I like it. It's not dry, it's not too salty. It's like, it's like perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I'll be taking that one home with me. That's all yours. Ladies and gentlemen, A. If you made it this far, I appreciate you watching. My name is Farnham. This is more seasoning. Please scroll down, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment below. Obviously, this one was a little rougher than the first two. That's okay. Things happen in the kitchen that we don't have entire control over. Appreciate y'all watching. I love y'all. You have a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your mac and cheese. We out.